a functional ingredient is something that's going to improve your recipe without changing the essence of it. And that includes free thawing as well as offering better consistency. And today on WTF, we're going to look at carboxymethylcellulose. And we're going to show you how to improve anything that you have to pop into the freezer, from pasta to cookies. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Task Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Today on WTF, we're going to be covering carboxymethylcellulose, which is a really amazing functional ingredient that has some cool properties that I think you're going to want to find out about. Now, if you've never watched us on WTF before, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques. We share recipes and how-tos to help you get started in uh, progressing along on your culinary journey. So if you like what you see, remember to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified about our fresh content because we're always working here in the test kitchen and we come out with something new every single Tuesday. Now, carboxymethylcellulose is interesting because we've done an entire episode all around methylcellulose. You can get that in the links in the description below if you just want to find out all about methylcellulose. So we're not going to cover too much of the basics here today. We've also done an entire episode all about microcrystalline cellulose, also known as MCC, and you can find that as well. So today we're going to cover yet another type of methylcellulose called carboxymethylcellulose, which we will abbreviate to CMC so that we can uh, save our breath a little bit. I'm sure we'll mess it up anyway. I'm uh, sure we will. So I used to always call it MCC, but CMC. CMC. So Scott, why don't we uh, maybe go into a little bit of the differences between CMC and some of the other types of methylcellulose that we've discussed in the past. So I always like to start with methylcellulose mm -hmm. because methylcellulose gels when it's heated. It's a very unique ingredient. It's the only ingredient that I know of that does that. Mm -hmm. Gels as it's heated mm -hmm. and then it melts as it's cooled. Uh, MCC isn't uh, water soluble, so it doesn't thicken, it doesn't uh, gel, it doesn't do any of that. CMC does thicken. Okay. So it, it has really great water holding properties. So it'll grab onto that water, it will thicken it up, uh, but as it's heated, it does not gel. Okay. okay? And do you need to heat it all for it to hydrate, or you can just put it in nope, cold? Nope, it is well. cold water soluble, so you can add it directly into things like uh, cookie dough or pasta, and it will just soak up that water and help hold it in there. All right, and for people who are um, kind of getting into methylcellulose, and it's, there are many different uses, and they're trying to decide which one is right for them, what are some of the common uses where CMC will perform superior to the other types? So for this, I, I really like it with CMC, especially when we're talking about these uh, cookies, is what they do in the cookies. So they have pretty unique properties, uh, and we like to talk about gums and everything mm -hmm. like that, where uh, when you add certain gums to something, why can't you just add any gum in place of that? Well, mm -hmm. they all have slightly different properties, different mouthfeel, different uh, textures, things like that. Mm -hmm. With this, it helps control the spread. So it's a, it's a nice thickener. So as they cook, they don't completely wilt out if there's a really high fat content to okay. them. So that's a really great property to have when you're doing frozen foods, frozen uh, pastas or, or cookies, cookie dough, things like that. It can also help control that spread. Mm -hmm. Also, really high fat content Co cookies, like we're going to show today. Uh, when they're really high fat content, they'll spread out, they'll turn into pancakes. But with this, it holds them and keeps that really nice, uniform, consistent shape. Okay, and you just mentioned a little bit about um, its usage in frozen applications. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So what what that does, and this is a, a really nice thing about it, and I mentioned it earlier, is the water holding properties. Mm -hmm. So. I actually wrote something recently, and you can find it in the description below. It's uh, Ask a Chef on Cineresis. Mm -hmm. So Cineresis is when things either get too cold or too hot, they tense, uh, tend to tense up, right? They tighten up and they kind of release their water. And you'll see that a lot with, you know, freezer burn. You mm -hmm. look in the, uh, you know, at ice cream or whatnot, and there's a lot of freezer burn on top. This helps hold on to that water and prevent it from kind of expelling out as okay. things tense or, or, you know, change due to the freezing or heating process. Right. So you can kind of store something for longer and retain that fresh taste yes. without losing it. Yes. And yeah, you'll see that today benefit. with our, uh, our pasta. Yeah. So I'm excited to see these two demos. Um, I, I think they're going to be really good because I think if you're working in either a professional kitchen or even a home kitchen where you just want to have more consistency, mm -hmm. the ability to store things for longer without losing their flavor, it's a great way to add a little bit of 
um, a functional additive in there to help you achieve that, right? So you're saving yeah. time, saving money, reducing waste, always yep. a big one. So all great properties. Yes. All right, let's get into the demos. What are we, what are we gonna do first? All right, so let's do the pasta one okay. first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the frozen pasta into the, uh, the boiling liquid. And actually this, on today, it's uh, ox broth. So I made the really nice, rich ox broth that I'm gonna be boiling the pasta in, and I'm gonna be using it in our uh, capoletti and imbrotto. So that's just capoletti and broth. And it's a very traditional uh, lunchtime uh, Christmas dish in Northern mm -hmm. Italy. So I'm going to show that and I'm going to show making of both pastas and just kind of show you two different techniques on how to roll some pasta okay. and then we'll show the plating of the two dishes. So let me get those in and these, so this is the capoletti and I'll show you how to roll it in a second. These have been frozen for two weeks. So I'm just going to pop them into the water. And I don't want a full rolling boil on my water mm -hmm. because it is fresh pasta and I find that with a full rolling boil it tends to just, uh, you know, wrinkle it up a little bit too much for me. So I like a nice, like 190 degree, just about a simmer mm -hmm. is where I like it. And then we have these. This is scarpanoche. So scarpanoche is a, like a very Ooh. fat kind of ravioli that is tapered on both ends and then pressed down in the middle to resemble kind of a shoe. So I'll show you how to roll that as well. And those are filled with duck. Ooh, that one looks like a pillow to me. Yeah, they look like little pillows. Mm -hmm. uh, they say they look like shoes, and we'll talk about pasta rolls in just okay. a second. Mm -hmm. So I have those in there. All right, I'll get them out once they're, they're ready. But they are frozen, so they're going to take a little bit of time to cook. Okay. First one we're going to make, and we have made pasta here before. This is a, a different pasta recipe. Mm -hmm. So this recipe obviously has CMC in it, but it's more northern Italy. So there's actually milk in this recipe mm -hmm. and also there's a tiny bit of butter so it's kind of that German influence because on the northern side of Italy and I know if I say that though there'll be someone who's mm -hmm. gonna get mad at me but yes How there's, dare a, you? there's a you know German <laughs> Austrian influence you know coming down and it's also much colder up at the northern part of Italy mm -hmm. that's where my uh, from my mother's side that's where they're oh. all from is the northern part of Italy cool so I'm gonna just place a little bit on the center and what this filling is is cream cheese mortadella, parmesan, and nutmeg. So four simple ingredients, but when you blend them up together, they're all extremely powerful, nice and salty, rich, kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. And then when you put them in something you know, like this ox broth, you get a really hearty dish in the most simplistic way. Mm -hmm. So we made before on WTF, we've made tortellini. Mm -hmm. And tortellini is distinct by it has a, a hole uh, in the center of it as the two arms are kind of uh, trapped around almost like two praying hands. So this one I'm going to bring around and I'm just going to pat it down so that it is you know tight. And then I work my way on one side. And notice I'm not putting any egg wash or anything you don't need to with this pasta. So I bring it down make a nice little triangle and then with these two ends I'm going to take them and you notice how it's nice and plump and I'm not creating a hole and with with this pasta, tortellini, you serve it upright. <laughs> and in Italy, it's very simple to change the name by just serving it upside down and putting no hole in it. Yep. So that one looks like a hat. So capoletti is upside down. Yeah. It's a nice little pasta served as such. Right. So I'll do the other one very quick, just a second way, so people can every, everyone can see it again. So press it down into a nice triangle. Mm-hmm. And I take the two ends. Remember on uh, the tortellini episode, I had a little stick, like a little dowel or even chopstick if you want. You can wrap it right around that if you don't want to use your finger. But there we go. And they're served face down with the nice, uh, almost, yeah, like you said, hat, you know, mm -hmm. dome up top. So the next one, scarpanoche, is very simple. I'm going to put our duck filling. This is duck with a lot of herbs. Mm. This one smells great as soon as you piped it out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is duck, herbs, and then we take the duck fat and we kind of make an emulsion with it. So it's a very hearty duck pasta. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it over and I'm going to flatten out the sides. So I make almost like a half a ravioli, right? A ravioli would be square. Mm -hmm. So this is like a rectangle ravioli. And what I do is I roll it up on this creased edge and I'll do it so everyone can see it on the camera and I just press it down here, right? So we have those little lips right here and it's pressed down on the edge. Easy peasy. Yep, one last time quickly. 
So I'll do it this way for you guys to see. It's very easy to roll both these. If you want, you can pipe a, a large sheet out, cut it, mm -hmm. and make them like that. And on this board, uh, so you can use semolina. I like to use a little bit of rice flour just because there's less dust to it, so it's a little more granular. So if people mm -hmm. want to make pasta at home, they can use rice flour. I, I suggest that. So let me move this out of the way. Okay. So in, a pos in pasta doughs like that, how much CMC are you using? So in that pasta dough, I can use anywhere from 0.1% all the way up to about 0.5%. It mm -hmm. doesn't need to be a lot of CMC. Uh, you can go all the way to 1% if you need to, depending on your recipe, if you're mm -hmm. doing a very, very high water ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, but I prefer not to bring it up past that. Like, you don't necessarily need to do that. Yeah. And it's going to work on your recipe as well. So, you know, find out where your recipe is. Like, with these, I need a, a bit more CMC for my cookies because mm -hmm. there is such a high fat content that okay. they tend to just spread out, right? So let me finish these. So what I have here is my scarpa notch. I'm going to take them out. I'm just going to place them on my grandmother's bowl here. Ooh. Those so look great. It's a very common thing to, uh, mm -hmm. to use these beautiful kind of decorative bowls nowadays. And it's nice that I have my grandmother's silver in my grandmother's bowl to make one of her dishes. Aww. She'll be so thrilled, and I'll bring it to her later. Nice. 92nd birthday this weekend. Wow. Yeah, pretty That's amazing, right? <laughs> that is amazing. So let's take out the other one, the second one. Right? And you can see this looks just like fresh pasta, even though it's been two weeks since it's, or yeah, two weeks since it was frozen. Mm -hmm. All right. And I think for people who haven't used methicellulose before, one of the concerns is always like, are you, are you changing the flavor of the pasta by adding something to it? Are you, you know, like... Oh, there is no you know, change in the flavor. Yeah. yeah. And what's the other thing that people say? Um, are you like bulking it up? And Yeah, so some people know. like to think that when they have ingredients in there they don't necessarily know, they can think they're bulking agents. But in this, this is not a bulking agent. This is completely a functional ingredient. This is doing something for our dish. Mm -hmm. So very simply, the way I just finished this dish is with my nice rich ox broth. And I just place a little bit in the bowl. And then you're able to eat them Ooh. and Janie, if you'd like. All right. Let me just finish this second dish, but if you wanted to try one of these while I get my sauce. Sure. Swap these around. So very simply, what I did is I took the uh, duck legs from this duck breast. So this is all the duck breast, the duck breast fat. And then I took the duck legs and I made a ragu. So a very hearty, herbaceous ragu. It has you know, rosemary and oregano, mm -hmm. some basil, oh, cool. tomato. So not too many ingredients. Mm -hmm. I just want to heat this up just a little bit. So we put a nice hearty ragu over the top of Ooh. our duck. That's a meal. Yes. So you just need a little bit. And then with this one, some parm reggie right over the top. And we are good to go. Here you go. I will absolutely taste this. And I will say, <laughs> like, this tastes fresh. And I am incredibly picky about, like, pasta freshness. Like, yep. I never buy frozen pasta just because I hate that it tastes frozen mm -hmm. after you've made it. This literally tastes like you just made it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it, it really does. It, it holds onto that moisture really okay, well, especially with the, yeah, the uh, filling in this one has, has mainly all fat Ooh, uh, that it's going to, you know, um, kind of purge into the pasta itself. So, and with our cookies, so our cookies, as you can see here, as Janie tries that, uh, the one on your left or my right is the exact same recipe as the one on my right and your left. So. The mm. difference between the two of them is uh, just a little bit of CMC. So they have a high fat ratio. This is about uh, two and a half pounds, or I'm sorry, two and a half sticks of butter. Two and a half pounds <laughs> of butter. Two and a half pounds. <laughs> That's an extremely high ratio. Uh, to, to a normal cookie mm. recipe, one that you would generally have. Um, and with that, you're going to get this spread, right? So you can see how much more it's spread out and flattened out around mm -hmm. the edges here. But this one holds onto that structure. I can make it 
I can cook it right away without having to refrigerate it. And I can also scoop them, freeze them, and then cook them and they will work the exact same way. So you don't have to worry about, oh, what do I have to do? What, ex what specific examples? Because when we have cookie dough, we either want to eat the cookie dough or cook the cookie dough and then eat the cookies. So you can take it right out of the bowl. You can scoop them onto a tray, get them into the oven, and they'll be done in 12 to 15 minutes. Yeah. And what kind of cookies are these? So these, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why there's such a high fat ratio I is I take you. the fat and I put some uh, vanilla bean, and I also put some coffee grounds, or coffee beans, whole coffee beans, depends on what you want to do, into the butter, and I infuse the butter with the vanilla and the coffee. And then when I make the cookie itself, I add cocoa nibs and uh, you know 60% chocolate uh, chips. So it's very chocolatey, very rich. You get that a little bit of coffee. It doesn't taste like a coffee cookie, but you get that richness from the coffee, that fresh vanilla bean. So you get a really impressive cookie like that just tastes like a chocolate chip cookie, but to the next degree. Mm -hmm. And this uh, is also amazing. Like all of these, they're both really good, but this one I love. And you can get both the rest, all these recipes, links in the description below, you can get all of them. But this is like a wonderful pasta dish. So right. yeah, and I lo always love duck, but like this is really, really nice. Yes, and it, it, it still feels uh, traditionally Italian, mm -hmm. uh, very minimal ingredients, but all done very well, so. Yeah, and again, like, it does not taste like you took it out of the freezer. Yes. It, it, ta it literally tastes like you just made the dough mm -hmm. today. So, and that's kind of a wonderful thing about it. So if you're like, I mean, if, if you're in a restaurant and you want to make fresh pasta, but you want to be able to prep ahead, like this is a great way to do it. You're not going to lose any of the quality of that pasta yeah. dish at all. So, which is really wonderful. And now I'm going to eat a cookie. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's pretty it? much it for, of course I want to split Yeah. It. Yes. So, uh, it's pretty much what you know CMC does. It just really kind of keeps that consistency. It holds in that moisture. It doesn't add any flavor, but if it's going to give you a better product, why not use it? And I also like the cocoa nibs in here mm -hmm. because they act almost like if you like walnuts in your cookie, but if you want to make the cookies and someone can't eat nuts or whatnot, mm -hmm. cocoa nibs are a great, uh, great way to get that texture without getting you know having to use nuts. Yeah. And what I love about this cookie is that it's really, really complex. Like, you know, I love chocolate chip cookies, mm -hmm. but this one, like, you get just, like, the layers of all the different flavors that you added come through slowly. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice, and it's not too sweet. I know people are always like, what's the best cookie? I don't believe there's a best cookie, <laughs> no. which is whatever is your favorite cookie, right? Yeah. So I like this one because it's chewy. It's not, like, too soft. It's not too, cr too crispy. It's got, like, a right of balance of everything. Yeah, you want to kind of appease everyone since everyone likes something slightly different in their cookies. So if you get that chewy, that crispy, that, you know, gooey, all those little bits into a cookie, that's what we try to do with these. Yeah. So hopefully you can get all these recipes, try them all out. Um, hope you enjoy them. You know, let us know in the comments what you think. And from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And turn that bell on because it notifies you when we drop a new video. If you like any of today's recipes, go to blog.modernistpantry.com. There you'll find recipes, ask a chefs, and tips and tricks, and more. And if you have a friend who you think would like this video, share it with them. And to get any of these great ingredients, just go to our website, www.modernistpantry.com. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences. <laughs>